In this video, we're continuing to talk about portfolio theory. And this video is all about talking about the issues that are involved. I'm going to give you the dirt on portfolio theory. Um, because what you come to discover is that you run into some issues in practical day-to-day -day application. So, I don't want you to get me wrong here because I'm a big fan of portfolio theory and I spend a lot of time talking about it. And the reason why I do that is because there's a lot of valuable concepts here that are useful to you. But I want to be honest in some of the problems that you need to be aware of. And the problems come from assumptions. Um, so, you know, I, there's nothing wrong with this model. It's a mathematical equation. And it's built on strong, sound theory. But when you use this model, you're putting in your own assumptions. And so the results that you get out are going to be good, or good results or bad results based on you. They're not based on the model. The model is genius, okay? <laughs> but you may or may not be a genius. I don't know. But the, the results of what this model spits out are entirely based on you and how good you're at at coming up with assumptions. And assumptions are very difficult. Um, so, you know, we've talked about correlations. And coming up with assumptions about correlations is the heart of what makes portfolio theory work. And that's really hard to do. So a correlation is how two of your investments are going to move related to each other in the future. So you're trying to predict how these two assets are going to move and how do you do that? Well, you're going to look at history, how they've moved related to each other in history, and, and try to infer some reasonable value for a correlation coefficient for how they're going to move related to each other in the future. Well, <laughs> history is no guarantee of what will happen in the future. You know, and we just saw this in the Great Recession. One of the, the big problems that happened was the correlations between investments were way off. They weren't what people expected and it cost people off guard. So correlations are important, but they're very difficult to predict. So that's the first problem, is that you know, just coming up with a future prediction is hard enough. But what you're doing is you're layering an assumption on top of your existing assumptions. Because you come into your portfolio with a whole list of assumptions based on each individual investment. The price you paid for each one of your investments is based on your assumptions of how that investment is going to perform in the future. So, you know, you made an assumption on the risk of that investment, you made an assumption on how much money it's going to make, and so you come in with a set of assumptions, and then you're layering on top of that another set of assumptions on the correlation between this investment and the other investments in your portfolio. So that is a lot of assumptions. Not only that, it gets worse because, you know, the number of assets in your portfolio, as they increase, your assumptions also increase. So the equation that I've been using in these videos is for a two-asset portfolio. And so you have a portfolio with two assets that could be stocks and bonds, they could be two individual assets, um, and then you figure out the correlation coefficient between them and that's your assumption and you use that to determine your expected performance. Well, most of us have more complex portfolios than that. So we need a, a, an equation that expands beyond two assets. And the cool thing is, portfolio theory can do that. For every asset you add to your portfolio, you just keep adding on to the mathematical formula. But the problem becomes, it gets very long, very quickly, and very complex, this formula. Because 
you have to determine a correlation coefficient between every relationship of every asset in your portfolio. So when you have only two assets, you only have one correlation coefficient. But if you increase that number to three, four, five, six, you have all of these relationships that you have to make assumptions on. That's an incredible amount of assumptions. So, <laughs> you know, in my opinion, there are too many assumptions going on here to come up with really accurate results out of this financial equation. So what do we do then? Um, portfolio theory uh, gives us a lot of guidance because it's built on sound theoretical principles. And so what I think you should take away from this is that the concept of diversification can be a valuable tool in your financial decision-making process. And you may not be able to use this equation to come up with the exact most accurate prediction for how your portfolio is going to perform, but you can infer some valuable information that diversification can have a powerful effect on how you come up with your financial strategies.